Hello YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing my end of August wrap up. So in the second half of August, I managed to read five additional books. So it was a pretty good reading month overall, I'd say. I think I read like 10 books. That's about my average usually. But uh, yeah, there were some really, really good ones in here and some like that uh, were not maybe quite as good, but a couple of them contenders for favorite books of the year list. So let's get into it. This is what I read the second half of August. Let's just start off right here with a little quick baby review of The Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice. This is my continuing my drunk classic series on all of the Vampire Chronicles. The video is out now so if you want to see the full drunk classics treatment on it I'll put a link to the video in, in here. Or down. There's, there'll be a link to it but anyway this has a full drunk classics episode. <laughs> Like little mini review for now. This is book four of the Vampire Chronicles and we're following Lestat. And basically this is Vampire Freaky Friday. <laughs> There's this guy who knows how to switch bodies. Lestat, it's a really, really terrible idea, but you can't tell him nothing. He goes through with it. Guy steals his body. So now he's stuck in a human body and he has to like get his body back. That's the basic gist of the plot. I feel like it's going in a good direction because it's more of a linear storyline. Like there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And a lot of the other books were just so all over the place with like different perspectives and time periods and going backwards and forwards in time. And it's just, they're difficult to read. This one is just like a story. So it's much easier to read, which is good. But basically it's Vampire Freaky Friday. And also just be aware, you should maybe look up trigger warnings for this. If you are sensitive to certain things like, uh, like sexual assault, there's a bit of that in here. I explain it in my Drunk Classics video, but just be aware if you need to look those up, please do. But uh, yeah, it, it's a lot, but I'm gonna continue on with the series and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I, I read this, <laughs> I think in the end. I don't know, I'll give it like 3.5 stars. It's fine, I guess. One more special feature book I read was Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This was my patron book club pick for August. And oh man, like I loved it. I tabbed so many things. This is honestly, it's probably gonna be my favorite books of the year list. Like, let's be real. I'm a big Sarah Gailey fan. And I understand how some Sarah Gailey books are very kind of hit or miss review wise, because it's a, depends if you like this writing style and how the endings are usually kind of messy, but in a good way. So I don't know, it's gonna be up to the reader themselves to decide whether or not you're vibing with this, but this one is very dark, um, trigger warning for body horror, a lot. <laughs> but basically we're following Vera. She's an adult woman and she gets called back to her childhood home because her mother is dying. Um, the thing with the childhood home, however, is that her father was a very notorious serial killer and he was committing these crimes in the basement of their house. And the father was eventually caught and everything, so it's a lot of generational trauma, but make it horror. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of dealing with like the trauma from the generation before you and your parents and how they affect your upbringing and how, well, how you see the world. So a lot of generational trauma, but through the guise of like a serial killer story with possible paranormal elements. So there's a lot going on here. I feel like the ending is a bit open to interpretation, but it's very dark. It's very creepy and just atmospheric vibes. And there's so much of the story where we have an unreliable narrator. So you kind of have to like pick up on these red flags yourself because a lot of the story is told from Vera's perspective as a child. So when child, when a child is telling you the story of what they saw, they don't see the red flags. I, me as an adult, I see the red flags because there's little sinister things going on throughout the story that you, that she doesn't notice are weird or abnormal. And so there's a lot of like unreliable narration. There's a lot of psychosis or uh, demons and metaphorical and real. So <laughs> there's a lot going on in this book, but it's definitely horror. Maybe not for the faint of heart, but um, yeah, I really, really liked it. It's messy in the best possible way. Next category is sci-fi and I read one of them. One of my most anticipated reads this year was August Kitko and the Mechas from Space by Alex White. So this is a new series by this author. I read the previous series of the Salvager series. It's mm, chef's kiss perfect. I love that book, that book series so much. So this is like a new 
series just starting out but basically it's so weird but in the mess best like quirky fun way so we have august kitko right um he's a jazz pianist and it's the end of the world basically they know that there's this alien vanguard coming to earth to destroy us all they know and they know it's showing up tomorrow so everyone on earth is just kind of partying doing whatever there's nothing we can do about it like our our big last chance to save us failed so they're like well fuck it <laughs> but anyway we have august kitko who's at this party he just really wants to jam out play some music and he meets ardent violet who is a non-binary rock star like the biggest rock star in the world and they kind of have a relationship and i'm like into it it gets a little spicy too i'm just gonna throw that in there but like I don't know. You'll have to read it and see, but I'm like, ooh, it got spicy. Anyway, so it's August and, and Ardent, and uh, there's aliens that show up, but here's the thing. The Vanguard shows up, they start destroying things, and then another Vanguard shows up, and apparently there is civil war amongst the Vanguard. Some of them don't want to destroy humanity, and they're fighting back against the other alien, like, giant mechas from space. So we kind of have, like, we're put into the middle of an alien civil war, and August Kitko is kind of the central piece of it. Who knew? Jazz pianist August Kitko. Kind of the linchpin of saving humanity. So it's very kind of fish out of water. It's goofy. Action-packed. So much action. Like, I'll give you the slightest tiny spoiler. Like, they fight a big-ass battle on the moon. Like, it's so sci-fi and great and like crazy action sequences and battles and aliens and like intergalactic adventures. And it has so many things that I'm like, I'm just happy to read this, you know what I mean? It's just gloriously a good time. And I felt the same way about the Salvager series. So I'm so happy that I followed the author to a new series and all of those vibes I was wanting, I was fully getting in this. I think I ended up giving it like five stars. Who cares? I loved it, you know what I mean? It was just, a, it's. It's here for a good time, okay? I had a great time reading this and I think you will too. Last category is romance and I read two of them. Both romances I read were kind of the opposite of how I thought I was gonna feel about them, if that makes any sense. So let's just get into it for a second because I read The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. And you know what? I wasn't really sure if I was gonna like this one because like, I didn't, it's not smutty and like, I'm a big ass perv. I wanna have smut in my books. Whatever, I'm allowed to, I'm a grown ass adult. I want smut in my books. <laughs> and this one doesn't really have any smut, but I was gonna read it anyway. I'm like, maybe it'll be funny. And you know what, like, it was kind of funny. I did end up enjoying it in the end. Do I love it? Eh, no, but I liked it. It's a solid, I'm solidly in like with this. I think I ended up giving it like 3.75 stars. I rounded up to four. I pretty much round everything up to four. Have you met me? But um, yeah, it's kind of cute and fun. So we're following this woman, Hannah. She is a bodyguard, but she doesn't look like one. She's like tiny. She's like buffy, like tiny little thing, but can like kill you with a spoon. She's a little tiny bodyguard. And we have Jack and he's like, um, he's like Chris Evans. He's like big ass Hollywood name movie star. And he needs a bodyguard because there's been like issues with stalking and stuff. And he's coming back to this small Texas town to be with his mother while she's getting treatment for like breast cancer. So it's kind of a fish out of water situation. Also grump sunshine to the max. And you know, it also deals with a lot of like letting go of past trauma and how that has allowed these two people to erect walls around themselves and blocking out a lot of good things in life because you're scared of letting go. So it has like some meat on its bones here and I did like laugh out loud a few times. It's kind of very like Hollywood in a way even though it doesn't take place in Hollywood. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of cute. So it didn't have any smut but like eh, I was fine with it. It's a 3.75 star book. It's fine. I also attempted to read The Romance Recipe by Ruby Barrett. I thought I was going to be obsessed with this. This is a foodie FF romance and I was like yes give this to me all day every day. And I started reading it. I read half the book and I will be honest, I DNF'd. Uh, I'm so bummed out about it. Cause like, here's the thing. I enjoyed the spiciness of this. Like if you, if you thought this wasn't gonna be spicy, let me tell you, it's pretty spicy. <laughs> but um, I didn't like either of the characters. 
And I appreciated that Ruby Barrett, this is an own voices kind of story. Uh, she talks about bisexuality a lot in here and like how it is like coming to terms with that with other people. So it does have a little bit of meat on its bones that I was kind of vibing with. But overall, both of these characters are just so... I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, I just was not connecting to either of these characters or their food they were creating. I remember they were putting, like, meat into things that didn't need meat. And as a vegetarian, I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> what is it with meat eaters and bacon? Y'all put bacon in everything. Things that don't need bacon. Stop it. So maybe that's just, like, a me thing. But, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's my trigger item. I'm just like, oh, bacon again. But anyway, it's, like, foodie. And there's, like, kind of, like, a reality TV show competition, they're trying to save this restaurant, and I was kind of hoping for more quirky characters you could really, really root for, and, you know, like, I don't know, maybe I was hoping for a bit more zaniness, and this one is so kind of grounded in sad, tragic backstories that it wasn't fun, you know what I mean? It was spicy, and it has some meat on its bones, but it's not fun, for me at least, and I, I just ended up DNFing because I just didn't care really how this went. I did skim it for the smutty bits, I will admit. So um, A plus for spice. I like the spice in this. <laughs> but overall, eh, I was kind of mad about the whole thing. All right, so that officially concludes August. And overall, I read some really good stuff. And some honestly might make my best books of the year list. Like I was reading some fantastic books this like August overall. Pretty excited about it. Let me know in the comments down below, um, what's a book with an unreliable narrator that you like? For me, uh, I just mentioned Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. Beautiful, messy characters. Let me know in the comments down below what's an un unreliable narrator that you're totally into. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want cool exclusive content, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. The links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Bye!